Now we're going to do another interview. <laughs> calm down, calm down. <laughs> okay, this one's going to be a lot, a lot more friendly than that. Alex Albrecht joins us in the studio. He's the host of Dig Nation and the Totally Rad Show, two enormously successful shows online. Yes. Uh, Alex, thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. I didn't realize, I'm just looking on the monitor, I didn't realize how much of like a drug dealer I was going to look like. I just like <laughs> threw this on. I usually have like spiky hair and stuff. But no, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And I haven't written any books, so there's no need okay, to right. get into any of that What stuff. were you saying when Bush was in power? <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, Alex, first, for the people that don't know, tell us about the uh, Dignation and Totally Ratchet. Yeah, so, um, well, Dignation is uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Kevin Rose, we were hosting a, a TV show called The Screensavers on Tech TV. I think it might be even six years ago, which is mind-blowing for me. Um, he came up with an idea for a website called Dig.com, which obviously is Dig.com. I think I've heard of that. Maybe. Might have heard it. I've seen it on some websites and stuff. Uh, but uh, So then we, we stopped doing The Screensavers, and we, you know the podcasting had kind of started bouncing around. I mean, you know, it was one of these things where... It was real sort of underground, you know, it was back in like the Adam Curry days when it was like you had to like download a separate program and subscribe to these weird RSS feeds that you'd have to find places. There was no iTunes RSS feed list. So, I mean, you were old school on that. When we were you, old school. It when was did you start that? Literally the day they announced that iTunes was going, I remember I, it was midnight, I was in bed because I was a big partier that back then. At midnight, I was asleep, <laughs> and uh, Kevin called me on the on the cell phone. It was a Tuesday, and I was like, "What? Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Leave me a message." Then 8 a.m. the next morning, he called me again, and I was like, "All right, something's up his butt. What's going on?" So I picked up the phone. He goes, "Bro, iTunes just announced that they're going to integrate podcasting into iTunes, which is huge. I mean, we had been following podcasting through uh, the screensavers, and I think Leo was already doing Twit at that time. Like, there was still it was just bubbling up." But Apple getting behind it and going, this is now going to be searchable, and we're going to have them in the iTunes store. You'll be able to just click subscribe. Anybody can do them. Game changer. And so he literally said, uh, let's, do a, let's do a podcast. We need to do a show. And we hadn't done the screensavers together for about six months, and we were kind of itching for a project. And um, he had also launched uh, Revision 3 uh, like two months before. Um, and so it, was just, it just made sense. And I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. And two days later, we shot our first episode. So how big is Dig Nation now? Do you have, I mean, is it like, is it a billion or a trillion people who watch it? I think it's a metric trillion, which is uh, obviously European. Um, a quadrillion, I believe. <laughs> a quadrillion, yes, is the, state, the state's way of saying it. Now, it's, it's just been fun, and I, I've always said, you know, we're, we're part talent and part luck. I mean, we just happen to be getting it right at the same time. Kevin and I both had followings from the TV show that were sort of actively looking for what we were doing next. The podcasting, you know... Market at the time was not, I mean, now is you go on iTunes and just search for anything, and there's like 30,000 podcasts on that topic, you know. Right. Uh, so we just really lucked out, but we've been very, very, very fortunate to be able to continue doing it. We've been doing it for five years. So, Alex, how'd you even get into it? Because I think the question that everybody has is like, so how do you get to be a web TV host star? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, how does one stumble yeah. into that? The good news is now it's pretty easy. You just uh -huh. buy a camera and go to Best Buy and you're on a web TV show. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, definitely true. Yeah. yeah, which is great. And that's what I love about the internet. Um, you know, for me, I uh, am a computer programmer. So I actually have a computer science degree from American University in D.C., but I also did improv comedy, which is a very weird mix. Um, so then starting doing the screensavers, which was just an hour of live television about computers, basically, uh, was the perfect fit for me because I had the sort of internet flowing, or not internet, the, uh, the improv sort of light on my feet kind of stuff to do live. How'd you get your foot in the door there? Because getting a TV show is pretty hard. Do you, okay, so this is my favorite story ever, right? So uh, screen, uh, the Tech TV had been on for a long time, like, and I had been watching the screensavers religiously for like three years. I mean, it was perfect for me. It was flip it on, you get to see what the new like NVIDIA card is coming out, and they get to test it, and all these people, and, you know, was a huge fan of Patrick Norton and Kevin Rose and Leo Laporte and Robert Heron and all these people from the screensavers, and I just loved tech TV, but it was based in San Francisco, and I, I was like, this is a place I should be on, but I was like, I can't move to San Francisco. I wanted to be an actor at that time. I was in L.A., and uh, my, my now fiancé, who was then my then-girlfriend, uh, invited me to a wedding of a friend of hers, and I went and met all these really nice people, and it was the last day. Somehow somebody said, oh, well, so-and-so hosts the man show for geeks, or, or produces the man show for geeks. And I go, 
I have a feeling I should know that show because I am a geek and I would like that. So I just sort of went up to her because I had been hanging out with her for the last couple of days. And I said, well, so what is this show that you do? And she, and it, she was actually the uh, producer of Unscrewed with Martin Sargent on Tech TV. And I literally just, it connected. And I went, uh, dude, I've got a computer science degree, improv background. I've always wanted to host a show on Tech TV. And she went, that's funny. We just got bought by Comcast. They're moving everybody down to Los Angeles. And one of the people that's not coming is one of the co-hosts for Screensavers. Oh, geez. And I went, I went, I love that show. What are you talking about? <laughs> this, is my, this is my show. And so she just said, dude, you'd be great for it. Went and set up a meeting with the casting director. And they read a bunch of other people. And So that's, yeah. uh, obviously, you get a little lucky there, right? But, oh, uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> I mean, to say the least, of course, in, the, in that context. But you know what I get out of that story is that you got to be ready for opportunity. I mean, you saw that that's the right place for you, yeah. and you know you went and talked to her, and you yeah. made that opportunity for yourself. I totally think that luck, you know, it's the old saying that luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. I, I mean, it, it, that could, I could have been any guy who just happened to watch the screen servers and just went, wow, that's cool, I'd love to host it, but they weren't right for the show, you know, so it, right. happened, it just was the perfect connecting tissue, and then the rest was just has been the craziest five years of my life. So now you mentioned that was your girlfriend back then. So now yeah. normally I ask uh, people who are famous on the web uh, if that's ever gotten them laid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. no. So I mean, you're going to have to I mean, answer yes, no but, either uh, way. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so, yes, but so. not, it didn't help in any way. If anything, I'm just <laughs> glad it didn't hinder in any way. <laughs> uh, have you had, uh, you know, girls or, or, or you know, anybody, well, not anybody. I'm sure people come up to you all the time. Yeah. But, like, girls are like, oh, my God, your eyes are the totally right. You're the thing days. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, at times. Uh -huh. It's cool. And I mean, you, it's fun. That's part of the, it's like the bonus, you know. That's like your Christmas bonus is getting stopped at Starbucks. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And in my opinion, that, uh, you know, you got to know that going in when you're doing anything in front of a camera. And did you think, like, Oh, why am I going out with somebody right now? You know, no. I never had that moment where I was like, wow, I wish I was single so I could have a bunch of fan sex. That just never, it never hit me. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I, I should, <laughs> now, now that I think about it, I should go do more live shows and figure that out. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've, you know, and thankfully, Heather, my fiance, has been with me through this whole crazy roller coaster that's been the last six years. So it's been really fun. It's been All really right. fun. So now for the people that don't know the Totally Rad Show, tell us yes. what that's about. Okay, so... We started doing Dignation five years ago. Um, subsequently, I've started a bunch of other shows. I had a cooking show for a while called Control All Chicken, which was really successful. Um, I did a show called Project Lore, which was all about World of Warcraft for a while. Um, and then the, the show that sort of has taken off and, and built some legs is The Totally Rad Show, which I, I met um, my buddies Dan and Jeff um, actually playing D&D. &D. Pen and old school pen and paper D&D &D for the first time is where we met. And we were like, what, what we got to do a show. <laughs> what was your strength? Was it 17 or 18? Uh, I, I believe my strength was actually 10 because I was a, a ranger. Oh, so I had I mean, high dexterity kinda, and low strength. That sounds kind of weak sauce. Actually, it might have been like 12 or 14 because I think I had both strength. Anyway, a 10 is way too that weak got sauce. Way, that got way nerdy. Okay, but right. So I met these guys. <laughs> we hit it off. We, we realized that um, we had a, a large number of common interests, movies, video games, television shows, comics, all this stuff. And we went, there's no show that's really out there showing, talking about all of this stuff. There's a lot of video game shows, and there's a lot of movie shows, and there's a lot of TV shows, and shows specifically about specific TV shows. Um, but there wasn't sort of this geek culture, you know, amorphous show that would cover all of this stuff every week. Um, and so we created the Totally Rad Show. So between all the stuff that you do that are all touches on, you know, geekdom, yeah. uh, are you king of the geeks? Oh, I doubt. I think that's probably Will Whedon. At this point, uh -huh. yeah, no. I, uh, Are I, you prince or at least ranger of the geeks? I think I'm like a duke of the geeks. <laughs> I think there's a lot of us around. We kind of split power, you know. If I'm at a conference and nobody else is, then I kind of I'm the big guy at the conference. But then if they just come up, it's like, hey, we're all here, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's, cool. That's cool. And look, this is an excellent uh, uh, lesson to everybody out there. Uh, if you play Dungeons and Dragons and you yeah. think nothing's going to come of it, you're wrong. You are okay. totally wrong. I mean, this D&D is back, baby. <laughs> and, you know, this is America, okay? And in America, we're the land of opportunity and hope. Yeah. And even a Dungeons and Dragons geek can actually make it in America. Yes, and can look. I, this is the worst <laughs> pimp outfit I ever put on. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, say hello to my little friend. Okay, so uh, finally, look, yes. uh, I also ask everybody this. Um, you know, and I get asked this question, oh, well, so what's your day job, right? I'm oh, like, interesting. Right, like, what, what do you mean what's my day job? I do a yeah. three-hour show for the love of Christ, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, 
does this stuff pay? Because a lot of people think it doesn't pay at all. Uh, but you're you're cruising. I'm cruising. I've I've, I've been again. I call I, I count myself as very very lucky. Uh, you know, in this space to be able to make a dime is big, and I've thankfully been able to make a living on this for about four years. So, and I make a pretty good living. All right, Not God to be bless. Too, uh, you know, I know I love it's that good. because it's it's good to to know that it's a very you know it's a it's viable it's a very it's a viable, viable medium choice. where people are making good money, yeah. et cetera. It's tough. Yeah. And it's, t I mean, it is not an e. A lot of people, I meet a lot of people, especially at these web television conferences that are like, hey, I'm just going to jump in and make a ton of money. It's, it's hard, but that shouldn't stop you from doing it. Right. And the th key here is do what you love, right? Oh, so, yeah. you know, if you loved, you know, that, that tech TV, that's why you got the job with yeah. tech TV. If you love the video games or the Dungeons yeah. and Dragons, so you do that, but you do it with passion. It's very Gary V. Do what you love, talk about what you're passionate about, you'll figure out how to make money on it. All right, Alex Albrecht from Dig Nation and to the Totally Rad Show. Thank you so much for your No, please, anytime. All right, Young Turk.